This video covers how to complete lab assignment 2.2.1.4, configuring SSH for Net126. So when we open up the lab, we see we've got one PC and one switch. So we've talked about a lot how we would manage a switch or a router or any networked uh, device, such as a switch or router, um, from a PC. So obviously we could console into it, which we've done many times via console cable. Um, when we console into it though, we do usually have to have close access to it at least. Um, but we also talked about remote access using uh, Telnet over the internet connection. So you just have to be connected to the internet somewhere and if you've got Telnet set up on your switch or your router, um, you can log into it. Now, last semester, we set up Telnet by typing in on the switch uh, line VTY 04. Okay. Then we went, uh, the next line we did was password, whatever you wanted that password to be. And then the next word was login to force it to use uh, that login password. Now, the significance of the line VTY 04 is you have zero through four channels, those are the names of them. So if you were to log in, you, the first person would get channel zero, the second person would get channel one, the third person would get channel two, and so on. So if you've got zero through four, that technically means you could have five users log in remotely to your router or switch at the same time. So that's usually more than enough. Um, you'll see sometimes they'll do zero to 15. That means 16 people could log in at one time. But the downside of using Telnet is the protocol that sends that information back and forth from the PC or whatever device you're working on to the switch or the router that you're logging into remotely, everything is sent in plain text. So if you were to capture that traffic using, let's say, Wireshark or any simple program like that is, that is actually free, you'd be able to see the exact exchange of information. So you'd be able to see username, whatever you type in, password, whatever you type in. So we want to try to overcome that, especially in today's, uh, you know, network security aware awareness. We want to try to prevent using plain text um, protocols such as Telnet. So we're just going to show you how to do Telnet first. That's kind of the first steps here. It says using the command prompt on PC1. So we go to PC1, desktop, command prompt. And this will just be like doing it from your home computer. And we're going to uh, telnet to S1. So we type in telnet as the command. And then we want to use the IP address that is set for S1, which is 10.10.10.2. So we see that up here in our addressing table. So we hit enter there. And you see it says trying to contact it, user access verification. So this is just like if we were to um, use a line console to get into it same exact thing they're looking for that password there and it's cisco you won't see anything type on the screen that's for security reasons but you just hit enter after you type in cisco and you're logged into the switch so you can do enable and then show run all right and you can get all that same information just like if you were doing um a console line and consoling into the switch right you can see all that you can even make configuration changes okay so it says show the current configuration and note the passwords that are in plain text here you could see it um, if you were using something like Wireshark you wouldn't even need access to this you could just see the traffic that I sent back and forth and note that everything is in plain text so it says enter the command that encrypts plain text passwords here so if we do config T on our router, I'm sorry, the switch. Um, now we're going to enter the command that encrypts it, which is service password dash encryption. Hit enter. Now if we go back and do a show run, you notice here that the passwords are encrypted using a hash, so it doesn't actually show Cisco. The only bad part about this still is you notice that these are exactly the same because the password Cisco is the same. So if you ever figure out that hash that was ran through with the algorithm, you can kind of technically reverse engineer it, but it would take a little bit of time. So that's just showing you that one way again. That doesn't matter though. The Telnet protocol, it would still send the passwords over the internet 
in plain text. So that's not a good practice. So we're going to show a more secure way, which is SSH. Okay, SSH uses a series of challenges so that it can be encrypted. So it says uh, encrypt communications. Now on Moodle as well, I've got the um, SSH for remote management PDF that you can open up and it'll show you the commands to type in, but you'll see them here as well. So it says, it's generally not safe to use Telnet because data is transferred in plain text. Therefore, use SSH whenever it is available. So we're going to go to S1. All right, the CLI tab is locked, so let's do a... Okay, well, let's just Telnet into it. All right, so we're still Telnet it in, and it wants us to set up all of the uh, information here for SSH. So it says configure the domain name to be netacad.pka. So we do IP domain dash name and then whatever you want it to be so we're doing netacad dash or sorry dot pka hit enter and then it says secure keys are needed to encrypt the data generate the rsc key rsa keys using a thousand twenty four key length okay so we're going to do crypto key generate rsa hit enter it asks you how many bits in the module it suggests 512. We're going to change that to 1024, okay, by just typing it in and hitting enter. And you see it'll say generating 1024 bit RSA keys. Keys will be non exportable. And it gives you the OK that has done it. Now we're going to create an SSH user and reconfigure the VTY lines for SSH access only, all right, instead of Telnet. So uh, we got to create an administrator user with the Cisco as a secret password. So we do username, administrator, secret, Cisco. Okay, and it tells you that, that SSH version 1.99 has been enabled. All right, now we got to go configure it. So line, and if you noticed here, they've got 04 and 515. Okay, so we'll just do line v, VTY 015. That'll take care of 0 through 4 and 5 through 15. Okay, and we want to do transport input SSH. That will force it to use SSH. We'll do login local because we set up that local username of administrator and Cisco as the secret password there. Exit. Okay. So we've got that set up. Uh, it also says remove the existing VTY line password. This should override that. Um, let's just double check. Put the show run. Yep. So we no longer have, well, uh, it still says the password. So let's go in line VTY 015. Uh, no password Cisco. So that no password Cisco should take it out of there. Now when we do a show run, it shows you no password there. So we did the Lime VTY 015, no password Cisco to take that out of there. Okay. Now it says exit the Telnet session and attempt to log back in using Telnet. The attempt should fail. Now, of course, we're already logged in here, so we have to log out of this session altogether. So if we do, uh, oh, and one other thing you could set too is the version. You could do IP SSH version two to make it use uh, SSH version two. It's the most updated, up-to-date version. So let's say we type exit, exit. All right, that ended our connection completely. Now, when we try to do telnet 10.10.10.2, hit enter, right nothing happens right it says open close so no matter how many times I do that it fails it'll fail okay so it says attempt to log in using SSH type SSH and press enter without any parameters to reveal the command usage instructions basically that just they just want you to see what uh, how to use it right so if you do SSH dash L and then you specify the username which is administrator Okay, and then um, and it tells you that's an L, not a number one. So it's SSH dash L, not one, but L, administrator, and then the target is 10.10.10.2. .10 .10 okay, 
Okay, and then it's going to ask you for the password, which is Cisco, and boom, we're back in, right? And then the next password is Cisco too. So as we go through, we can do show run, we can do configuration mode, all the different stuff we were just doing. So, and we also have 100 out of 100 down there at the bottom right hand corner. So using SSH is much more secure than Telnet, and this just kind of shows you the um, different ways to remotely log in once you configure it. That concludes lab assignment 2.2.1.4 uh, for Net126, which covers the routing and switching essentials curriculum in the Cisco Academy. This video walks through completing lab assignment 2.2.4.9, configuring switch port security for Net126, which covers the routing, routing and switching essentials curriculum in the Cisco Networking Academy. So for this lab, we've got a couple of PCs here, PC1 and PC2, that are connected to a switch. Um, this is usually in a real world situation, so something similar to this. You may have a switch with 8, 16, 24 or more ports um, to allow in devices like PCs, laptops, and so on, connectivity to the internet. Um, even wireless access points will be connected to a switch. So. Um, with this configuration, we would like to lock down what PCs we actually allow connectivity over our switch. So we just don't have somebody walk in and plug up a, a rogue device like this rogue laptop right here in our uh, topology to be able to allow connectivity. So our switch, we can configure port security to be able to learn dynamically the MAC addresses of each end device. And remember from last semester in Net125, Every network interface card has a MAC address, media access control address. It's kind of like the social security number for your uh, computer. So every network interface card as well on your computer or laptop or um, phone, the IP refrigerators that connect to the internet, every network interface card that plugs in via the ethernet cable, the RJ45 ethernet cable, that has a unique MAC address that is unique to that network interface card or your computer. If you've got Wi-Fi as well on like a laptop and you've got the plug, the Wi-Fi network interface card actually has a separate and unique um, MAC address as well. So it is identifiable to your computer only. So we're gonna let the we're gonna configure the switch to pick up on that and shut down or not shut down, but not send um, the packets if. Uh, a rogue device where a plug in and we'll kind of see how that works here. So we're going to access the command line interface on the switch first. Go to configuration mode and we're actually going to um, configure ports 1 and 2, FA01 and 02 at the same time. Usually, you know, last semester, remember our command interface, if we wanted to do one port interface, FA01. Well, there's a way to do these both at the same time, and that's interface range FA0 slash 1 dash 2, meaning FA01 through FA02. You hit enter, and you see that it now says config interface range. Now, you can do this as long as every single command you want to type will need to be the same on both ports. If there's even one character difference, you wouldn't be able to do it. So like if we were assigning an IP address, you wouldn't be able to do that here with the range command. But all of ours are going to be the same in this particular lab, so we can. So we first want to turn on um, switch port security. So we type in switch port mode access, switch port access mode, oh, sorry, port dash security. Sorry switch port port dash security there's no need to type the other part in there okay so we got switch port mode access switch port port dash security all right then we're going to look at the next line and it says set the maximum so that only one device can access uh, the fast ethernet port 01 and 02 so we do switch port and if you hit a question mark or sorry let's do port security first and then a question mark, you can see what available commands are there. So regarding port security. So switch port, port security, and you see there we've got maximum. So we want to set it where it only learns a maximum of one 
MAC address from a device for that one port. So it's kind of like when it first learns about PC1 here, which is connected to FA01, when it first learns about it, it's going to be locked in to FA01 the way we configure it. So it can only learn one. It cannot learn more than one. All right. Um, so now the next step we've got is C. It says secure the ports so that the MAC address of a device is dynamically learned. So that means when it like sends something across it, it picks it up based off the packets. So we do switch port, port security, MAC address, sticky. Okay, what that means is when it sends it across there, it sticks to that port. That MAC address will stick to it. It can only learn one, so that's all it's going to do. All right, and it will not let anything else go across that port. Now we got to set a violation because that's great that we set it, but what happens if something like the rogue laptop were to plug into port FA01 and it sends something? What's going to happen? So we have to set a violation. Okay, and you can see here if you do a question mark, the violations are protect, restrict, and shut down. Now, shut down is pretty obvious. That means that it's going to shut down the whole port and turn it off um, like you were to have typed shut down. If something uh, were to go across there that is not linked to PC1's MAC address or PC2's MAC address. But we're going to set it to restrict because it says that the violation um, should not disable the port, but packets are dropped from it. Okay. So packets are actually dropped from it. So um, we're going to do restrict. So it's going to drop the packet. Okay. And now we're going to disable all unused ports. So we've got 24 fast Ethernet ports here. So if we do interface range FA03-24, that means 3 through 24, and we do shut down. Hit enter. Shuts all of them down. We've also got two other ports. Um, interface range G01 through 2, and we're going to do shutdown there as well. Okay, so we've disabled all other ports there. Now, for the switch one to learn about the MAC address of PC1 and PC2, because right now it does not know about it, <clears throat> we need to ping from PC1 to PC2, and then we can do it back the other direction. Okay, so we sent some packets back and forth. And remember, in our uh, OSI model, like in last semester, the MAC address is part of that, the source and destination MAC. <clears throat> so it learned about it. And we can check here if we do a show MAC address table. There we go. All right. Show MAC address table, and you see here that it says this is the MAC address that has been uh, statically learned and is connected to FA02. This one is connected to FA01. All right, now if you look here, okay, the MAC address here should, the physical address should match for the one connected to FA01, so this is PC1. So you see this right here, the physical address matches, all right? So it learned about it. Same thing for PC2 here, IP config forward slash all. This one's connected to FA02, and you see that it should match what is right there, okay? Now, that means again, remember, it's not gonna learn about any other MAC address. So it tells us to Attach the rogue laptop to any unused switch port and notice that the link lights are red. Okay, so connect rogue laptop fast Ethernet 0 to let's just do FA03. <clears throat> you notice that it is red because we shut all the ports down. It says enable the port. So let's go in here. Configuration mode, interface FA03, no shut. Hit enter. All right, we bring it up. It's starting to come up. All right. It says, um, and verify that the rogue laptop can ping PC1 and PC2. So I'm going to click the fast forward time button a little bit so that it comes up. 
we try pinging and you see it says successful to PC1 and PC2, okay, from the Rogue laptop. So that should work, okay, because we didn't set up any port security on FA03, right? So it should be able to do that. So let's do this. Now we're going to disconnect the Rogue laptop and we're actually going to disconnect PC2, okay, using that little X symbol. And let's connect the Rogue laptop to the FA02 port, which PC2 was plugged into, okay? Fast forward time a little bit, everything is green, it looks good, okay? So we're gonna verify that the Rogue laptop is unable to ping PC1. So let's think about, well, let's try it first. So Rogue laptop, PC1, and you notice no matter how many times I refire this, it says fail. Now, why is that? Well, while ago previously, FA02 was statically linked to PC2's MAC address or that physical address, and it will not accept any other one to flow across it. So Rogue Laptop is trying to send information across FA02 using its own MAC address. Not going to work. And we only set it to be able to learn one, and that is it. Now, if we would have set it to be able to learn two or more, then yeah, it would have worked. But because of that, it will not work, even though this is green okay that's because we set it to restrict now protect will still send the information but it'll send you an error message uh, restrict like we have it um, and that was protect it'll send it but send an error message restrict will uh, not send it but leave the port up shut down will actually shut the port down altogether okay so again when you disconnect this it goes back down to 99 but if you reconnect PC2 to FA02, you fast forward time a little bit, all right, you should be able to get the lab assignment back up to 100%. If it stays at 99, that's okay. It's because you set the, uh, took the port out, okay? So that, that's okay. Um, as long as you submit it, I can see that you got it, you're good to go. So that actually concludes lab assignment 2.2.4.9, configuring switch port security. And again, uh, kind of not only just configure it, but think about why this actually uh, works and what other situations could you do um, like the shutdown violation methods and other ones.